Fudge, uh, what's on the agenda? June and Reginald Lewis are standing by to talk to you. So why don't you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. <laughs> Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and take home an extra hundred smackolas. Well, how do you, uh, well, how do, you do? Uh, June and Reginald Lewis, huh? Is that right? Yes. Mr. Lewis, before we go any further, you'd better clarify something for me. Is this your sister or your wife? This is my wife, Groucho. I see. Well, just checking. You know the old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of bandages and adhesive tape. <laughs> now, how long have you been married? Two and a half years, Groucho. Why are you holding on to each other? Are you afraid if you let go, you'll kill each other? I need him. <laughs> no. Now, June, let me ask you a rather personal question. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Uh, why did you marry this big lug here, huh? <laughs> Reginald is his name? Uh, because my father wanted me to marry a man who is handsome and well-built. Is your not... father disappointed in this broken-down specimen that you finally hooked? He's not a broken-down groucher. Excuse he's... me? No, he's the handsomest and most well-built man in the world. <laughs> Reginald has the best built in the whole world? <laughs> June, what proof do you have that Reginald has the best built in the world? Have you personally gone around investigating the re rest of the entries? No, he won the Mr. Universe contest in 1957. Oh, mm -hmm. well, congratulations, Reginald. Uh, <laughs> could you show us a bicep or two? I'd be glad take, to. take your shade off and let's yeah. see the chest that shook the world. <laughs> Rumpelstiltskin, huh? <laughs> He doesn't have any muscles until he takes his jacket off. And I don't have any muscles until I put my jacket on. <laughs> That's really a hope chest you got there. Right? <laughs> well, let's see you flex a couple of yards of the Swift Packing Company. How do you like it, you frustrated wives out there? <laughs> What are your dimensions, uh, Skinny? I have a 50-inch chest, a 30 waist, 18 arms, 25 thighs, and 17-inch calves. You have a 50-inch chest? That's right. Is that blown up or without the wind? Uh? Uh, that's relaxed, Groucho. Relax. June, I'm pretty sick of him. What, what are your dimensions? Uh, 39, 21 and a half, 35. It's odd, isn't it? His dimensions are twice as large but for some curious reason that I can't explain at these prices, I'd much rather look at hers. <laughs> now, Reginald, imagine calling this big boxcar Reginald. <laughs> Have you always been built like this? Uh, no, I wasn't. I was, uh, when I was 15, I was quite puny and weak, and I had very little muscle, just like you, Groucho. <laughs> You know, normally after a crack like that, I'd strike back. <laughs> but in this case, discretion is the better part of valor. <laughs> now, Junie, do you still maintain that Reggie has the most beautiful male build in the world? Of course, Groucho. Well, if anybody in the audience wants to challenge us, why, uh, get in touch with us. I'm not kidding, I mean it. Maybe next week we can have a man on the show with even larger muscles. Okay, Reggie, put your shirt on, which I find it rather distracting. <laughs> Now, uh, let's play You Bet Your Life. Okay, George. Now, this box contains three sets of questions. 100 easiest, 200 harder, 300 hardest. Now, your job is to earn at least $500 with four questions. If you do, you'll uh, get a chance at $10,000 at the end of the show. Did you see his shape? Yes, oh, yes. What'd you think of it? That's amazing. Oh, how'd you like hers? It's amazing, too. <laughs> Well, uh, what category did they select? Uh, food and cooking. Food and right? cooking, huh? Yes. Uh, That's right, isn't it? Yes. Now, you know how to play this game, huh? Okay. Pick a question. $100 question? Yes. Mm. For $100, uh, what do you call toasted cubes of bread served with soup? French toast. No! You keep your big mouth shut. <laughs> I may take a sock at you. Oh, it's crouton. Crouton. Don't get rid of it. <laughs> get rid of that lug. He doesn't know it. <laughs> okay. You have a hundred dollars now. You're on your way to five. Uh, why don't you use another one? Two hundred? Yeah. Okay. Remember, the idea is to get five hundred. Uh, for two hundred dollars, what kind of sauce is saved on Eggs Benedict? Turn. 
tartar sauce? No, it's hollandaise. Oh. Well, you still have it's your hundred dollars. When are the hollandaise? That's in there around <laughs> Christmas, huh? All right, now yes, you... Sir. And you have two more chances yeah. to get 500. You have 100 now. I think that whispering in his ear distracts him. Oh. <laughs> Another two. You're not paying any attention to what I say at all. <laughs> Genuine caviar is the eggs of what fish? Now, talk it over. <laughs> They're not trying to answer. They're just making uh, love up there. That's salmon eggs. What is it? No, I'm sorry. It's staging. Well, it's going to well, be pretty tough to make 500, but yes, you have another yes, chance here. Uh, How much have they got, George? 100. 100. Well, you can get 400. You can't get five anymore. Unless you have a counterfeiting machine in your cellar. Okay. This is what, 300? 300 dollars. Right? That's right. You're a gambler, anyhow. Yeah. For 300 dollars, what do you call vegetables cut in match-like strips? She's nuts about them. Huh? Uh. Mm -hmm. Slob? Slobs? No, Slob. there's, there's no slobs up here, no. It's Julianne. Well, you've won $100, so you're $400 short of getting five. But you're a very attractive couple, and I'm sorry you didn't win more. But maybe we'll see you again in a couple of weeks, if we can find somebody who thinks he has better muscles than you do. So thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you, Jeff. Bye-bye. Uh, now, Groucho, I'd like you to meet Carmen Phillips. Her partner is Ferdinand de Mara, who is better known as the great imposter. Uh, during his career, he has actually impersonated 30 different people. I'm sure that you've read about some of his exploits and like to meet him now. So, Carmen Phillips and Ferdinand de Mara, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and take home an extra $100. Carmen Phillips and Ferdinand de Mara. Mr. De Mara, put it there. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to meet somebody who's as crooked as I am. <laughs> now, why aren't you in jail? Well, I've never done anything completely wrong, Groucho. In fact, I've now usually don't ended up... the question. Up... Why aren't you in jail? Never been convicted of a crime, Groucho. Oh. So what? If everybody who committed a crime was convicted, San Francisco would be an island in the bay overlooking the city of Alcatraz. <laughs> I must say you're a very friendly fake, Fred. And you have a fascinating story that I want to hear. But first, I think I should talk to your partner for a couple of minutes. She's not a bad-looking dish, is she, Fred? Not at all. Not at not all. all. Let's see, you're Mrs. Carmen Phillips. Where are you from? From Bahia, Brazil. Oh, well, that accounts for the Carmen, huh? That's right. But uh, Phillips isn't a Brazilian name. Uh, is your husband a Brazilian? No, no, no. I married a sailor during the war, an American sailor. American sailor. <laughs> how, did you, how did you meet your husband? Well, I... Uh, how did you meet him? If he was a sailor and you were in Brazil picking coconuts? I wasn't supposed to meet him at all. I was going to an officer's party. You were going to an officer's party? Right, at an island. On an island? Yes. Alcatraz? Uh, was no, 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 no. Uh, Aratu is the name of the island. What was it? Aratu. I'll have it one, too, as long as you <laughs> have an extra. Uh -huh. But anyway, uh, you know, it was a real nice party, and uh, we went on a crash boat, and we had some chaperones. Some... You crashed this party? No, no, no. We, were, we had to go on a crash boat. And? Well, so I was going to this officer's party. Who chaperoned this orgy? Well, three ladies, three elderly ladies. Oh. But anyway, How old were they? I'm curious to know oh, what you regard I, as an elderly woman. Well, I, I should they, say because they, they, they're still, you know, Well, around. they're in Brazil, huh? They, no, 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 they were Americans. They were Americans? Uh-huh. Well, what happened after you crashed this party? Well, I didn't crash it, but anyway... Uh, well, you said you were on a crash boat. Right. So we were going to the island, and uh, my um, husband... He Your was, husband? You said well, you were in a boat with three old women. <laughs> In, the, in this crash boat. There was he a was, sailor in the was, boat, yeah, too? he was a motor machinist. What was he doing in the boat? Was he making a play for the three old ladies? Oh, Groucho. <laughs> <laughs> he liked me. He liked? How do you know he liked well, you? Well, I don't know. He, well, he must know? have liked me because uh, after the party was over, he well, went Was to the... he steering the boat? Well, he was a motor machinist, whatever that is. Well, know? what was he doing in the boat? Well, he was the motor machinist on the boat. Uh, he was operating the, the boat? The crash boat. He was operating? What does a motor machinist do? I'm the fan. I don't know. <laughs> Would you mind? <laughs> Fred. Fred, 
Yeah. I'm sure you've been a motor, a motor machinist in your time, among other things. What does a motor machinist do? He chases the three chaperones. <laughs> well, what, what was he doing? Was he steering the boat? Well, I hope not, because he was looking at me, you know, and... <laughs> Why, it's a crash boat. He crashed into the other boat, I suppose. He's just sitting there looking at he you? He was trying to get the boat to the island. Oh, I see. Then he was steering the boat, huh? I don't know if he was steering or That's not. That's all I'm trying to find out, if he was manipulating right, the boat. then, he was. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> how old were the old ladies? I still haven't found out. I couldn't tell you how well, old they were. Well, approximately. What do you regard as an old lady? At that time, how old were well, you? Well, I was very young then. How old? How old were you then? Well, I was very. I'm not going to tell you, but I was very young. <laughs> <laughs> how is your marriage working out? Yeah? It's working out fine. Huh. In fact, I'm writing a book about it: the American husband, how to catch one, and how to keep him. <laughs> I wrote a book too. You know, it's yeah, called Groucho and Me. How long have you been married? Or won't you reveal that? Either? No, let's not, let's not go into that. Well, tell us some of your observations on marriage. Yours in particular, I mean. Well, um, I think that uh, a girl should, uh, for instance, never marry a stranger. You mean you should marry somebody that you've known all your life? Not all your life, but, uh, you know, you should... Um, you should know the guy and marry him, not for what he can give you, but uh, for how much he can put up with. You know, if everybody followed those rules, nobody would ever get married. <laughs> Are you interested in what's been going on here? Oh, it's been charming, yes. It is. Mm -hmm. Fred, how did you get started in this kind of a career? Well, when you were born, did you impersonate the doctor and send your <laughs> old man a bill? Oh, a number of years ago, uh, Groucho, I acquired some uh, credentials. And How I did you get these? I acquired them. You, is this a euphemism for stealing them? Oh, no, no, I acquired them. Acquired them. Well, what, do you, what do you mean by acquire? Uh, obtain. Obtain. Hmm. Huh? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, do you have another word for it that would make it more baffling? Borrow. Borrow, yes. <laughs> well, you borrowed these credentials, and then what happened? I got myself an appointment as dean on, uh, of a college in Pennsylvania. What's that? Dean of a you college. You became a melancholy dean of a college? That's right. If you were good enough to be a dean, why didn't you get the job under your own name? Because, of course, I'm not uh, academically qualified, Groucho. I never finished high school. <laughs> you became a college dean and you never graduated from high school. Huh? I know our educational system has some holes in it, but I've never realized these holes were as big as the Grand Canyon. I may report you to the PTA, you know. <laughs> Outside of being a phony professor, what were some of your other impersonations? Oh, I've been a surgeon lieutenant in the Royal Canadian Navy. You operated on people? Mm hmm. <laughs> Isn't that rather dangerous? Well, you might say that. Mm -hmm. Where did you steal your new credentials, uh, I mean, to be a surgeon? Uh, I don't seem to be getting through to you. I acquire these yeah. things. I know, you keep telling me that. I hate to bring the word steal into this conversation. <coughs> how did you get these credentials? Um, how did you set yourself up as a surgeon on a, on a warship? Uh, actually, I acquired these credentials, obtained a commission, uh -huh and uh, was sent to Korea as such. How long did you last as a Navy doctor? About Until a year. What happened? The first guy came in with chicken pox and you sent him up to the crow's nest, I suppose. <laughs> did you operate on anybody? Oh, yes. Korean nationals, a uh, okay. great number of operations. Uh -huh. well, for what kind of operations? Uh, battle, medicine sort of things, uh, uh -huh. gunshots, so uh -huh. forth. Did you have any medical knowledge at all? Uh, the only medical background I had, Groucho, was uh, that which I obtained as a hospital corpsman in the United States Navy. Well, what did the other doctors think about you? Did they watch you operate? Well, let me answer it this way. Uh, while we were in Halifax at the Royal Canadian Navy's headquarters, I gave seminars in internal medicine to the other doctors. <laughs> and they swallowed this? Oh, yeah, the avid note-takers. Uh -huh. What was that? Avid note 
take Have it, no take. I thought you were speaking Latin for a minute. <laughs> Did you receive any honors in, yes, in I was the medical corps? I was decorated by the Korean government. By the Korean government. Mm -hmm. Which side? The north or south? <laughs> What finally happened to your job as a doctor, or a stagion, as you say you were? Uh, because of this uh, decoration I received, the press officer on board the ship sent uh, dispatches back to Canada, and it appeared in the Canadian press. Mm -hmm. And the doctor, whom I was impersonating, suddenly came to life and said, well, I'm here, not in Korea. And the Royal Canadian Mounted Policeman that investigated the thing told me afterwards quite confidentially, confidentially that uh, he was about ready to throw the real doctor in the bucket. Were you in jail in, in uh, Canada? No, in no. In the United States? Have you been in jail? Yes, I have been in jail. I spent a year in the Texas State Penitentiary. Well, it's about time. I think. <laughs> somebody nails you. What were you in there for? Uh, I was in there as Deputy Warden. <laughs> This is really true? You were the deputy? Yes, warden? this is quite true. Well, how'd you get that job? Again, a trade secret. Uh -huh. um, when I was exposed there, uh, they invited me to stay on because uh, I had instituted some reforms there and was in the middle of some more reforms, so to speak. What are you doing in Hollywood, Fred? Or should I phrase that differently? Should I say, who are you doing in Hollywood? <laughs> I've just finished a motion picture with Allied Artists. Oh, it must have been on a wide screen out there, huh? Are you a movie actor now? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that, Groucho. But it's a block Woodfield production called The Hypnotic Eye, a new type of movie uh -huh. in which I play nine parts. You're an amazing man, Fred, and next time Khrushchev visits this country, I think it'd be a good idea if the government uh, would first find out where you are. <laughs> Wouldn't it be a good joke on us if Eisenhower was really talking to Fred here instead of Crusoe? <laughs> well, this has been an education to me, Fred. I haven't learned anything. I've learned a few things about what's happened in Brazilian waters, but nothing about your career. You're certainly the most intelligent and charming and likable crook I've ever met. <laughs> now, let's play You Bet Your Life, and uh, don't skin me here either, will you? <laughs> What category did they pick? George, I finally found a man who's more corrupt than you were. <laughs> now, they selected the uh, dictionary quiz, right? That dictionary. is correct. And I'll bet he's a hound on this, too, huh? All right, uh, you can start. You get four questions, you know, to make $500. Don't and... I get any category or anything? Well, I'll take it. Yeah. Help yourself. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, boy, but I bet on this guy. Uh, no, don't give it to him. Oh. <laughs> Nothing personal, you understand. No, I understand. <laughs> Just about to grab it, too. <laughs> what an opportunity. For $300, you're starting off. She's if starting a, off. If a synonym is a word with the same meaning, what is a homonym? A homonym? Yeah. An opposite meaning. Uh, that's right. Uh, no, no. That's wrong. No, I still think opposite. No, it's words that sound the same. Oh, right. That's right. Well, that's all right. You got three more chances. <laughs> so three on. more chances to make $500. Oh, you can try this. Another 300 $300. If an armadillo is an animal, what is a peccadillo? Peccadillo, a fault. A small sin, would you say that, or that's fine? Well, you have $300, two more chances to make $500. You know, I always thought a fault was something that when an earthquake happens, then there would be a fault. Isn't that true? A fault? F-A-U-L-T. I don't know. That's a homonym. <laughs> I thought homonym this... was an oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> this will make homonym for breakfast. Uh, uh, shall we? Bouncing laughs off the old quiz master. Huh? If an aviary is a birdhouse, what is an apiary? Apiary. A p i a r y. An apiary is a a bee. <laughs> bee house. Right. That's enough. That's you good have enough. five hundred dollars and one more question, and uh, you get to keep all this money anyway, so you might as well, yeah. <laughs> they don't fool around with the little ones at all. Well, you're, you're in for the big money already, so uh, this is uh, extra here. If a catalog is a list of saleable articles, what is the Decalogue? Decalogue, the Ten Commandments. That's the Ten. You have been reading the Bible, Fred. You uh, wind up with $800, and that means you'll come back here in a little while and get a chance at two, five, or $10,000.
Missouri that one. Carmen Phillips, Fred DeMara won $800, so here they are for their chance at the big money. Well, here they are. Congratulations. If you miss the question, you still get to keep everything you've earned, you know. Okay, now pick a number for a total of $10,000. Seven. Uh, well, uh, seven is fine. Seven. That's for $10,000. Now, Freddy Boy? Six. You don't care if I call you Freddy Boy. Not at all. Not at all. You can pick a number for $5,000. If neither of these numbers comes up, the question is worth two thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Are you ready? Right. Until August of spin. Oh, spin the wheel. Huh? Well, you picked uh, six and seven, and it came up nine. So this question is for two thousand dollars. Until August of 1956, the Statue of Liberty stood on Bedloe's Island in New York Harbor. But they changed the name of the island for $2,000. Tell me the name of the present name of the island on which the statue stands. Now talk it over. Take a guess. We're going to guess uh, Liberty Island. Liberty Island is right. <laughs> Pretty good for a kid on the island off the coast of Brazil, huh? With three old ladies and a sailor. <laughs> That's right, you win a total of $2,000. Now, what are you going to do with that money, Fred? I'll acquire some uh, real good credentials. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, use the rest for my favorite charity, the Feed and Clothe Fred DeMara Fund. Well, that's a, that's a worthy charity, Fred. Peter, what are you going to do with your money? Oh, first I'm going to count it. Why don't you get some... <laughs> what are you going to do with the money? Uh, first I'm going to count it, and then I'm going to divide it. You know, now Uncle Sam gets some, and then the church gets some, and then... There are four of us, my husband and my two children and I, and we split it. Well, give my regards to your husband, not you, Fred. <laughs> give my regards Thank to your you. wife, uh, Miss Brazil. Right. And congratulations for, to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.